Hey everybody, uh, in this lesson, we are going to talk more about the rule of sum. This is lesson three in our organized counting unit. The rule of sum, we actually mentioned briefly in our first lesson. Uh, but today we're going to work more with that rule of sum, expand on the kind of questions we can do, and uh, just do some more examples together, uh, tying in various skills. So let's dive in. So in this first example, we have an electronic lock, and I can, I've illustrated it at the right. So we've got the digits 0 through 9 on that lock. And we're going to say that the code for this lock has to be at least eight digits long, um, but it could be up to 10 digits long. So um, we've got three different cases. This is a problem where the focus is going to be on counting cases, where one calculation like a factorial permutation calculation won't be enough to solve the problem. We'll need to look at three cases. So our code could be eight digits long. Our code could be nine digits long. Or our code could be 10 digits long. Uh, let's look at each of these cases and find out how many codes we can have with each. For an eight digit code, so we know from our previous work, if we have 10 digits, 0 through 9, and we're arranging 8 of them into a code, the number of ways to do that is 10p8. We don't need to set up a big uh, FCP calculation. We can just do 10p8. There are a lot of codes. Uh, 1,814,400 uh, possible codes. Uh, for 9-digit codes, it's very similar. You have 10 digits that are there to choose from, and you're arranging nine into a code. 10p9 is 3,628,800. For a 10 digit code, there's actually two ways to think about it. So if you're arranging all the digits in a code, that would be like doing 10 factorial. You can also think of it this way, is from the 10 digits, choosing and arranging 10 of them, 10p10. You can do that, and it might be worth trying on your calculator. Do 10p10 and do 10 factorial. You'll see that you get the exact same value both ways, and it does work out to be another 3,628,800. We've now considered all the cases that could give us a legitimate combination. And now we just have to add those guys up. If we do that, uh, I got about 9,072,000 codes that are possible. 9,072,000 codes. So our first example, each individual case was fairly straightforward, just had to add them up in the end. Uh, let's move on. Let's look at another indirect method example. There's just a couple things with this question I want to touch on. So I'm a big Wheel of Time fan. It's a fantasy series. They're making this into a, a TV series, um, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, it's a fairly long series spanning 20 years, 15 bucks. So uh, let's say I'm putting all these books on the shelf. And just because I'm a math teacher, I'm I'm thinking about how many, how many incorrect ways could I put this um, series on my bookshelf? Well, there, if we were to try to break this into cases, there'd just be too many to count. It'd be super impractical. It's much more practical to go at this question indirectly. So to ask, well, how many total arrangements are there? The total number of arrangements, well, there's 15 bucks, and I've, I'm arranging all 15 of them. That's just 15 factorial. I'm going to leave that just as 15 factorial for a moment. How many correct arrangements are there? Well, that doesn't take too much time to think about because there's really, there's one correct arrangement, putting you know book one first, book two second, and so on and so forth. Uh, that must mean the number of incorrect arrangements is just the total, 15 factorial, uh, minus the uh, first, or minus the one correct arrangement. And um, this particular question, uh, this would be a sufficient answer. This is exact. If you do try to do 15 factorial on your calculator, um, why don't you try it? This is a good talking point. 15 factorial. You're going to see it's actually too big to display on uh, your. if you're using a standard calculator. It's too big. Um, when your calculator can't display all the digits, it gives you something like the following. 
So on a standard calculator, you're going to get 1.307674368 times 10 to the 12. Um, 10 to the 12 is a 1 with 12 zeros after it. So that's equivalent to 1 trillion. So there's about 1.3 trillion uh, different possible arrangements. And that number is too big to actually write down an exact value for. If you're using an Android phone or an iPhone, you might have enough space to actually have the, all those digits uh, uh, written down. So in a question like this, I might, uh, like on a test or something, I might say, hey, give me an expression for the number of incorrect arrangements. And in that case, 15 factorial minus 1 would be sufficient. All right, let's move forward. Um, in this example, now it's a pretty straightforward scenario. We have nine digits, one through nine. We're going to make a five digit number, maybe for making a code or just for fun. Um, but we're going to combine factorial, permutations, counting cases in the indirect method and look at this question, look at this situation from a variety of ways. Um, so to start off, we're going to think about how many five digit numbers can we make like in total? And now this is pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing too crazy going on here because we have uh, nine total digits and we are putting five of them in a specific order. And I should mention, we are only using each number once. So we can't repeat numbers. Uh, so uh, we are using 9P5. Um, of course, if we were allow, allowing repeats, then the number of five digit numbers would be just nine times nine times nine times nine nine to the power of five uh, but here it's um we we can't we're arranging five digits from nine uh and you can do this on your calculator no need to set up an fcp for this 9p5 15,120. pretty straightforward uh let's move forward uh how many of these are even so we have to what we have to do here is think about, well, what makes an even number an even number? If you think about it, only the last number has to be even to make an even number even, right? Like, for example, you know, 8,700 or 87,654 is even. Why is it even? Well, because it ends in four, and that's an even number. All we care about is the last number. And there's four different ways the last number can be even. Four. Well, what about the other four numbers? We could use the FCP for the rest of this. However, we can, for the other four numbers, we can just use permutations because we have eight digits left and we are arranging four of them. 8P4 times four will give us the number of even numbers. It's about uh, 6,000. Well, it's not about. It is 6,720 different even numbers that we can make. So that's um, tying in that fundamental counting principle with some permutations. Uh, let's try the next question. Well, how many are odd? I want to actually do this two ways with you guys. Um, we can set this one up a lot like B and think about, well, what makes an odd number odd? Well, if an odd, for a, to, a number to be odd, the last digit has to be odd. It has to end in one, three, mm -hmm. five, seven, or nine. Um, that's five different possible options for the last digit. Like Just like the previous question, once you fix the last digit, it's going to be odd. It doesn't matter what the first four are. And of the eight remaining digits, we are arranging four of them. And uh, 8P4 times 5 will give us the number of odd arrangements, 8,400. Uh, that's one way to do it. Uh, a second way to do it would be to recognize, well, hey, a number is either even or it's odd. And if we have the total number of numbers we can make, oh, evidently total is spelled with, a, with an A now. I'll just fix that up. Uh, we can just take the total number of arrangements and subtract the number of even numbers we found. So the total we did uh, earlier on it was 15,120.
The number of even did uh, even numbers was 6720. And if you do uh, that subtraction, uh, you'll see that we get the exact same result that we got using our first method. 8400. So um, this is a, a question where you could use the indirect method that works pretty well. Or combining the FCP with some permutations, it got you there as well. So two ways to think about that problem. Uh, let's move forward. Uh, how many five-digit numbers can we make that are less than 80,000? So this is similar to B and C, except what makes a number less than 80,000? So that would mean it would start with a seven, so it's in the 70,000s or less. It just can't start with eight or nine. So it's the first digit that matters. The first digit has to be one of the numbers one through seven. That makes seven options for the first number. And then common theme for the remaining four, you have eight digits to choose from and we have to put four in a specific order. So seven times eight P four will get us there here. Eleven thousand. 760. So similar to B and C, except we were kind of had limited options for the first digit. Uh, let's try uh, one more. Um, how many five digit numbers can you make that are less than 80,000 and odd? So we're kind of combining our strategies for C and D. Um, we have to think carefully about this one though. Just erase that made by accident. So I'm going to set up just a little five digit number here. Mm -hmm. Three, four, five. All right. So if you recall, so I'm just going to, you don't need to copy this down right now. I'm just kind of spitballing here. If you recall, to be odd, we had to end in one, three, five, seven, nine. So you might think, well, okay, that's just five options, and then eight, and then you know, for the first, the first digit has to be one through seven. That's seven options, but it's not so simple. Here's why: if the last digit was a nine, then that would be fine because we would have you know the four remaining numbers, odd numbers between a one and seven left over. And we'd actually have all seven choices for um, the uh, first uh, seven choices for the first digit, and then we would have, um, uh, and then we would have, um, excuse me, we'd have seven remaining digits. We've used two of them. Mm -hmm. Go back to my pen. So we've used nine for the last digit, and. Uh, we would have, so I might actually tweak that as well. So we've, we're going to say nine is the last digit. And there's obviously just one way to get a nine, right? You just choose a nine. And then we would have seven digits left over, and we'd have to be arranged three of them for the middle. The middle three doesn't matter. It just has to start with a number less than eight, one through seven and end with an odd number. So if the last number was a nine, then that's all straightforward. So this is um, case one. Ends in nine. Why am I saying this is case one? Why isn't that just the end of things? Well, if we think about it, what if the last number was one, three, five, or seven? Then those numbers would not be available for the first digit. Um, so we need a second case to consider, a second different case, where our number ends in one, three, five, or seven. So let's set this up, this calculation. So in the uh, in this case, we're finishing with one, three, five, or seven. That's four different options. Um, and now for our first digit, if we've used up a one, a three, a five, or a seven, that means that they're not available for the first digit anymore. There's only six options left. 
And then for the remaining three middle numbers, it doesn't matter. There's seven digits left to, cho left to choose from, and we're arranging three of them. So that would be um, the calculation for case two. Those are the two cases. Uh, we can calculate those two and add them up, and we'll have our total number of ways for an object to be, or for the, uh, our, our five-digit number to be less than 80,000 and odd. So seven times seven P3. is 1,470. And uh, for case two, that would be, I guess, 24 times 7P3, because we got a six times four there, 5,040. And so in total, just adding up those two cases, plus 1,470, 6,510. So a seemingly fairly innocent question, actually we have to think very carefully and we had to break this up into two cases. There was no way to get that 6,510 uh, directly. Uh, so this is actually a very like, kind of like a high level problem. Um, uh, definitely uh, a, like a thinking problem and on the more difficult end, um, you definitely would not have a test full of these kind of questions. That was pretty challenging. Um, so, um, and just to summarize in this example with the five digits, we've done a lot. We've used factorial, we've used permutations, we've used the FCP indirect method, and we had some examples where we had to count cases. I would really encourage you to go back through these five and just make sure you really kind of understood um, uh, each one. And I will say too, with a question like this one, Part E, um, for those of you who really love to just, you know, for your teacher, just, just tell me how to do a type of problem and I'll do that and get an answer. Um, that's not always uh, available um, when we're doing organized counting, especially if you have to break a problem into cases, you have to develop experience um, uh, separating those cases out on your own. There's no fixed way to do it for any given problem. Uh, so that's just something we have to grow into as a, a grade 12 data management students. Uh, let's look at our last example. Definitely not, it's, it's not gonna be as much heavy lifting as, as this one here. Uh, so uh, maybe you've played this game, a simple game called Pass the Ace. Each player receives one card. So um, uh, we're just gonna do a couple uh, questions here. And what I'd like you to do is express your answers just in permutations. Uh, we won't exactly be concerned with the what the answer is, but can you set your answer up as a permutation first? Um, so how many ways can all three dealt cards be read? So, you know, three players, each person gets the card. How many ways can those three cards be read? Maybe you want to pause and try this yourself and then unpause. Uh, but here we go. Let's do it. If we think about it in a standard deck of 52 cards, half of them are read. There's 26 cards in a deck that are red cards. And we have to think about how many ways of, from these 26 cards, how many ways could I deal a card to each person? So the order does matter. We are arranging these 20, these three cards. So this is just actually 26 P3. That's not too bad to do on our calculator. 26 P3. 15,600, 15,600 ways this could happen. Um, see if you can write the next one as a permutation. Um, how many ways could all three players be dealt face cards? Remember, there are 12 face cards in a deck, four jacks, four queens, and four kings. So in this case, from those 12 face cards, we are arranging three of them, 12 P3. And that's 1,320 different ways that all three players could get face cards. Um, not as many as the previous question because there's only 12 face cards, less options. If we move into part C, how many ways could the three cards uh, all be face cards um, and this is all be read. Fix that for later. Um, 
how many ways could the all be face cards are all red? So the, you know, that'll be on your uh, on your lesson sheet if you're choosing to use that. Um, but if you're just copying this down to your notes, it, that should be all red. Um, so you might think, well, I just, you know, I've got the two cases from before. I mean, I've got the number of ways they could all be face cards and I've got the number of ways they can all be red. Um, however, we saw in our previous unit that in cases where events are uh, non-mutually exclusive, we can't just add these number of ways together, right? Um, in terms of a Venn diagram, might just scratch out a rough one over here. I'm not going to populate with numbers, but you know, if one of these circles represents red cards and one of these situations or circles represents face cards, then there is some overlap. There are red face cards, right? So if we just add our previous two answers, we are going to get um, uh, too many options. So let's revisit the rule of inclusion exclusion and let's write down what that says. Um, so what we're looking for is the number of ways that all three could be, I'll just say this, that, that all three are face cards or all three are red. So that's what I mean when I write that in this particular problem. So remember the rule of inclusion exclusion said you take the number of ways to get three face cards, you add the number of ways to get three red cards, but you have to subtract the number of ways uh, to get uh, three face cards and three red cards. So that was our rule of inclusion exclusion from a previous unit. Um, the number of ways to get dealt um, three face cards we've done, that was 12 P3. Uh, the number of ways to get all red cards we've done, that was 26 P3. We did that part A. The last thing to do is think how many ways can we get three cards that are a face card and a red card. Of our 12 face cards, there are six that are also red. There are six red face cards. Um, the Jack of Hearts, the Queen of Hearts, sorry for my poor heart drawing there. The King of Hearts, the Jack of Diamonds, the Queen of Diamonds, and the King of Diamonds. There's only six of those options. The number of ways that all three players get a red face card is pretty small, 6p3. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, now we can finish this one off. So um, whether you go back and get these numbers from the previous questions or just do this calculation we have here, 12p3 plus 26p3 minus 6p3, uh, 16,800 ways. All right, so I hope you would agree in this lesson, we have not learned any new skills. You know, we've, we've used factorial permutation, uh, fundamental counting principle, broke things into cases that we used the rule of sum, we used the indirect method. So we really just applied all the tools and did a few more examples together. Um, what you guys need to do is, uh, is really practice, uh, get used to, um, Looking, get, looking at different scenarios, breaking things into cases, when to use the indirect method. The only way you can get better at that is just with lots of experience. Again, because there's really no formula to do these problems. Uh, so to, you know, if you just do this all the time, you will always get the correct answer. Uh, it takes a bit of thought. Um, so for some people enjoy the challenge, others may struggle a bit and uh, both, uh, both groups of people will just need to practice to get uh, to get better. So um, on the classroom, um, I have posted uh, some practice questions with some more uh, rule of sum, some indirect method uh, problems for you to do. Uh, today, I also have a formative quiz uh, on just some of the basics we've learned about uh, FCP, uh, factorial, and uh, permutations for you to give a try. Um, all right, guys, uh, please uh, practice. Please let me know if you need a hand with anything. Um, have a great day, and we'll see you guys online.